topic is the contributions of the Mizoros in the Indian freedom struggle. This is something to do in the beginning of Rajasthan and later on, uh, there were three persons who joined the Indian National Army that I'm going to give in details. <clears throat> As you know, Mizoram was annexed by the British because of the Chi Empire. The Empire of Chi was, as you know, very <clears throat> elaborated by the British. And after this, the discovery of T in Assam in the year 1818 to 1822, and they found out that the tea of Assam is much better, uh, more or less similar to the Chinese tea. So they changed their trade. They, changed, they immediately changed their trade route coming to India. <clears throat> so the extent of tea cultivation started this is for purely, mainly for the investment, capital investments. <clears throat> As such, the British started to extend, I'm going to make it brief this portion, extend their tea cultivations uh, there at the Mizo country. As a result, there was exchange of fire, exchange of war, sorry, exchange of uh, raids, etc. And finally, the, the British uh, started to penetrate in and more or less conquer a portion of the northern hills. And finally, they annexed the whole hills in the year 1891-92, and then 1898. The whole hills was amalgamated into one hills. Now, during the in the events of the affairs, I would like to share with you this one. There was a chief named Zakapa who never bowed to the imperialists. Now, this incident happened because of that Lieutenant J.K. Stewart, who scouted the southwestern hills, was killed on 23rd February 1888. This happened a few kilometers from Rangamati, that is in Bangladesh. The responsible person was Hausata, the southern chief. However, the chief died before punishment was given to him. And this happened due uh, as a result of the Chin Lusai expedition in 1888 to 90. Now, as we know that the British were, the white, as I said, were quite proud and they looked down on others. Here also, I would like to mention one thing here. This is the insolent, insolent behavior, very insolent behavior of C.S. Murray the then assistant political official towards Chief Zakapa. He, this Zakapa, Chief Zakapa was from Lungle district. Now, when trying to find the culprit, that is Haushata, Mure came over to this Zakapa village. <clears throat> then for his own pleasure, he asked Zakapa a girl. But Zakapa was quite annoyed and was furious. Then he refused to give the, any girl. Then the C.S. Murray once again asked for his wife. And by this time, Zakapa was really, he could, no, he could not control himself. He snatched a rifle. And at the same time, that time it was not exactly a rifle. It was more or less a, a crude type one. Then C.S. Murray also took out his pistol and they confronted each other. However, the elders, <clears throat> they at least subsided for the time being. Murray was furious and continued to be very angry. With his troops, they burned the granary of Zakapa's village. So this was what happened. Zakapa was also very angry. And in retaliation, they ambushed Murray and his party and annihilated the troops by killing six persons. Now, what Murray did was that he complained to the Viceroy of Calcutta, Lord Dufferin. By that time, Lord Dufferin was the Viceroy. Finally, Zakapa was apprehended and was taken to Calcutta and was tried at the court of the Viceroy. And he was in prison for a year. <clears throat> now, in the word of Alexander Mackenzie, there can be no doubt that Mr. Murray's disgraceful conduct was the principal cause of the outbreak. <clears throat> the British regime actually demanded food, food items such as rice, foals, eggs, goats, and vegetables 
they used to collect through their subordinate partner. That is subordinate partner, that is R.J. Moore. Those of you historians must be knowing R.J. Moore. R.J. Moore. <clears throat> so they, the Rashi, more or less, were the subordinate partner of the British government of Mizoram. Now, what happened was that one particular chief tennis named Robuiliani, she was the widow of the late chief Vandula, who was also very famous among the Mizoram chiefs. <clears throat> Robuiliani was furious and asserted that as a queen, she had never in her life paid taxes to any of her counterparts. Robuiliani and her son, Lalchua, were imprisoned due to their refusal to pay the petty tax. We know that Robuiliani died in Chittagong jail, where she and her son were imprisoned. <clears throat> the collections of the above mentioned taxes continue unabated. The responsibility of implementing and fulfilling the government orders was Satin Kara. Satin Kara was a person, uh, a Rasi at that time, who used to collect, and by the same time, he used to ask for more than what the government was asking. So Satin Kara came to Nathiel village, but unfortunately, he was killed and his head chopped off by Non Cheva, a person named Non Cheva. Almost at the same time, Chief Dokula. This is the southern chief in March 1891 had them boost and killed two persons. So they were imprisoned at the Chittagong jail on 18 February 1892 and they were released on 12 February 1896. The case of Noncheva was taken seriously by the colonialists as it seems to challenge their sovereignty by the Mizos. What they wrote, quote, the criminality of Loncheva, if proof, is far greater than that of Daukula. It was an act committed against us. So that was what happened. The British government retaliated it. Loncheva was brought before the superintendent. That time, the uh, Mizo Hills was looked after by the superintendent and the South Hills by the assistant superintendent. So the superintendent asked why he had killed the Rasi. Loncheva bravely replied by stating that he was the defender of the chief land. The chief did not like the taxes that were collected from his subjects. Therefore, he would do the same to anybody who was trying to collect taxes. <clears throat> Nonchewa was imprisoned for 19 years in Andaman Island during the colonial period for bravely trying to protect his land and his people from the foreign domination. Nonchewa was indeed very famous and also brave and well, he was also a very successful hunter. <clears throat> now, what the superintendent said was that he made an order, a circular, for both the accused, making war against the, the British, refusal to give taxes. That was what they said. <clears throat> both were given the highest punishment and were to be imprisoned in the penal settlement in Andaman Island in 1891. And later, they were put in cellular jail Actually, cellular jail was built in 1896 only. They were released after 19 years of imprisonment. <clears throat> now, as you know, the pen is mightier than the sword, it is said. This saying is very correct. There was a <clears throat> young lady named Dar Chuami. He was the, actually the first woman to react against the administrations of the chiefs and the elders through the newspaper called Mizole Vites and Sinbule. Oh, this was started in the year 1902. He, here she mentioned severity of forced labor and the maladministrations of the British subordinate partners, the elders and the chiefs. So she exposed the defects of colonial rule in Mizoram. <clears throat> that was what happened. Now coming to the diary of Telela, Telela was a politician in the year 1925-26. Telela was the first person who politically reacted against the British and their subordinate partners. This happened in the year 1926. According to him, according to his diary, he wrote, the people were subjected to do all sorts of works, including forced labor. We are between the hammer and the un un unreal. 
The power of the chiefs were also fully supported by the superintendent. Therefore, the former were becoming more and more greedy. <clears throat> Collections of phones, eggs, etc., to bribe the government officials was the common experience by the households of the villages. Actually, they used to collect all these phones, eggs, etc., even patty, also, even sometimes rice, also by these officials, the subordinates of the colony, colonialists, let us say. So this, they collected it and they took it to ISO, the headquarters of the time, in order to bribe those officials. The government also used to ask a certain amount of paddy from the village households for the rasi. The burden of the cultivator was quite heavy by the time. The most burdensome was the demand for forced labor. Beyond the government fixed quota, it usually made by the chiefs and the rashi, but the superintendent ignored the chief powers. Any period while the superintendent between 1924 and 28, he made a very strong rule that those persons who do not have passes, even at the nearby garden, were to be destroyed, and the shopkeepers were also not to be spared either. This happened because the traditional ways of gardening was now put a stop by the superintendent. Again, a clerk named Paliana collected Fatang Fatang is a petty tax and forced the villagers to work without pay. And the reaction came from the public, the villagers. And what happened was that it came to the notice of the government, but the governor, instead of helping the people, he, yeah, made, he made them to give fines. So the government's response was very severe and a total of rupees 2,000 was fined from 440 such persons. Again, a complaint was made regarding a financial matter. Money that was deposited for interest was withdrawn by a chief. So this was brought to the notice of the government. But the government, what they said, they were considered committing serious crimes against the government. Those agitators were considered to commit a serious crimes against the government. So the ringleaders were apprehended on 23rd October 1926, they were in prison. So the Mizo agitation had some positive effects, although the government reacted and the response was negative. However, the agitation had some positive effects. So the taxes were now made lighter than before. As you know, Arthan Lira, who was the MLA in 1952 and uh, MP Rajasabha, he he'd said that Mizoram was under the administration of one person, a dictator, that is the superintendent of Mizoram. They were very authoritative and more or less despotic. And only their fellow white men could speak to them. So that was what happened in Mizoram also. The chiefs were subordinate partners of imperialism. Mizos were ruled repressively and oppressively. None could critically speak against the bureaucracy and its subordinates. They now realized the need of the our democratic norms for the people, so they wanted democracy. They also believed that once India got independent, the elected representative could rule in Mizoram, but there was no political for platform to influence the public. So because of this non-existence of political, there was no political assassin, they did not have any well in it organization. I'm going to skip the First World War because the Second World War is more important where the Mizos involved themselves in the INA. The World War II came to at the doorsteps of the northeast of British India. When the World War reached Burma, A.G. Mako, the then superintendent of the Lusai Hills, invited the Mizos to help them in their war efforts against the Japanese. The administration spread propaganda that it would be unfortunate if the Japan occupied, Japanese occupied the hills. If the Mizong Hills was under the fascists, people would live like slaves and there would be no freedom as enjoyed under the British rule. So rumors also spread by the government that Mizo jobs would be overtaken by the Japanese. So options were given whether they would join the Japanese or the British crowd. This is what happened. So the Mizo, as they were greatly influenced by the new faith that is Christianity, and apart from that, because of the British administ suppressive administration, plus uh, they needed 
job also because they introduce education. Education means accelerate job. So they know it. So they they were given two options only. So they have to join the British Crown. In 1940, as a result of this, in 1940, a total of 3,551 Mizo young men and women joined the British Army in different fields and forces. By that time, A.G. McCall was the, as already mentioned, the superintendent and his successor, A.R.H. MacDonald, was also very much aware and active in defending the border of British India. However, <coughs> Without their knowledge, there were also few Mizos who joined the Indian Freedom Movement against the British. As already mentioned, Japan was the only imperialist power in Asia. During the Second World War, the Japanese overran China, the Pacific, Indochina, that is Cambodia, Laos, Malaya or Malaysia, Burma, Thailand, Vietnam. These countries were occupied in April 1942. So in February 1942, Due to the strength of the Japanese, the Allies surrendered to the Japanese. And out of the prisoners of war in Singapore, there were 64 Mizo prisoners. Out of that, only three joined the INA. Many Mizo young men came into contact with Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose while they were in the Japanese. Region. In January 1943, Subhas Chandra Bose, the leader of the Indian National Army, visited Singapore prisoners' camp. Among the few volunteers, three Mizos were also included, namely Darthom of Lungle district, Biagien of Azo, and Kaptanga of Rolu, that is in the eastern Saitul district. Let us talk about this Darthom, what is his contribution? Darth Homer first served in the medical corps of the British Indian Army before joining the INA. He fought against the Japanese in Penang Island in Malaysia, and he unfortunately was a prisoner of war during the war. He joined the INA on 12 May 1942. According to his autobiography, how he wrote, and before that, all these three, I have taken the sources from their writing plus, their autobiography plus, their sons and daughters, still alive. He said, during their training, every day they shouted the national slogan, in Kulab, but he wrote like this, in Kulab, okay. A revolution or uprising, a political slogan, and others would shout, Jindabad. Then one would say, Hindustan, and others would respond, Ajad, independent. I was wondering that by that time, Hindustan was very common, but why we said India? So again, he mentioned that the name of Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru would be mentioned and other, others would shout, right, raising their voices, Jindabad. According to him, both civilians and military were groomed and given training. He said, we look forward to our freedom. Why do we anticipate? our freedom, we were quite happy and contented. He also stated, as I have given myself for my people and country, I have never tried to betray this voice. I have joined, that is the INA, and I will never forget it. When we think of our country's freedom, our hearts become lighter, and that is our main aspiration. That's what he said, very strong words. So he also mentioned that they've sing the national song, Sare Jahan Se Acha, Hindustan Hamara Hamara, Bulbul Hai, this they sing. But I wrote it correctly, but he, he was not writing very correctly. Now, well, he also stated that he recollected what Netaji, Netaji Sebastian Rabos had given and one of his lecture, a few sentences. Due to the occupations of India by the British, that is Netaji Subhas and Rabos, India had become poor and the people were oppressed, he said. So this had greatly influenced Darth Homa. And another person, the second person was Biakliena. He joined the British Indian Army on 9 November 1940 at the age of 18 years. He went to Lucknow on 27 November 1940 as a nursing shipboard. Later on, he served the Indian military hospital for five months. And after that, he went to Penang, Malaya with many other fellows. 
He was like Dark Swama, he was captured by the Japanese in Singapore on 15 February 1942. He joined the Indian National Army at Singapore on 23rd October, October 1943 at the age of 21 years. He was expelled from the British India Army on 10 January 1946. As he joined the INA, he actually was expelled from the British India Army. For six years, he was in the INA, that is from 9 November to 1940 to 10 January 1946. During this time, they were also given jungle warfare training in Malaysia. After that, they sailed toward Rangoon by a Japanese ship. On 5 May 1945, they were captured by the Allied forces, that is by the British and others, and they were detained in insane prison that is in Yangon, near the old capital of Myanmar. He was transported to India by ship and under escort. After facing the Army Inquiry Commission, he was discharged from service on 10, November, 10 January 1946 at Lucknow. The third person, K. Kata, joined the Assam Rifles under the name Tara of Nusai Hills. In 1940, he was a Japanese prisoner of war in Malaysia like other, the other two. Later, he joined the Indian National Army at the age of 25 years. According to information, he came home on March 1946. Almost finished. On the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of India's freedom, all the three, namely Darthoma, Laubiakliena, and K. Kapta, received Tamra Patra from the government of India on 15 August 1972. Darth Homa, the last surviving INA, died at the age of 99 on 21st July 2019. This is, this is what they received, Tamra Patra. Can you read it? I couldn't make it out. Can you read it? Anyway, these these are the three persons who are having this, who are having clothes, no meso clothes. One, two, three. These are the three persons who joined the INA. This the middle one is the first chief minister of Mizoram, Sochunga. Sir, if you can rewind, I can read it. Okay, okay. Can you read it? Can you zoom it a bit, sir? Yes. All right, all right. I'll give it later on. Okay, sir. I'll send it the original copy later. Okay, sir. Okay, on 22nd on April 1944, the Japanese soldier entered Kuangpa village, a small village in Champai district, that is to the eastern part of Mizoram, near the Tio River, that is Burma and Mizoram were divided by this river at the Burma border. Huang Pao was under the Japanese government for 48 hours. This is Mizoram. And Japanese soldiers were the freedom fighters who came with Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose. This is the only evidence to show that the Indian freedom fighters set foot on and occupied a tiny spot of British Mizoram, or we can say uh, India also. On 24th, I think this is quite significant and unique also. One should know about this one, make a note of this one. This is the only place where the INA and the Japanese occupied this village. On 21st April 1977, on the place where the Japanese hoisted their flag and INA, the Art and Culture Department, Government of Mizoram, made a memorial statue of Netaji Subhasandra Bos here. <laughs> Eyewitness. I'm talking about not only Mizoram, but I'm going to talk about the southern part of Manipur also. In 1943, the Japanese had occupied the southern Manipur, where the majority of the people were Mizos at that time. The Indian National Army, with Subhas Chandra Bose leading the Japanese soldiers, came to Saikot village. This is a little, uh, a few kilometers from the main town, and interacted with Colville Tha. It is recorded as Colville. Colville. The chief of cycle. 
the INA and the Japanese were very happy, even especially Subhas Chandra Bose was very happy to show their gratitude. The INA leader Subhas Chandra Bose gave him a very significant letter, including a red blanket to the chief who had helped the INA. Now I would like to add something here. I just rang, rang his grandson yesterday in order to know because somebody said that someone write, someone wrote in their book that the INA leadership was quite significant in those days. Therefore, uh, the Mizos, they lead the Sebastian Dragos and the Japanese towards Moirang, that is towards uh, Moirang is in Loktak Lake. I, don't, I think many of you might be knowing the Moirang. So they, <laughs> lead the Subhasan Rabos and the Japanese army towards Moirang. That time the Japanese were trying to capture Impal also, and Impal Kohima. So that was what happened. But according to him, he, he said that this, this is not the case. It is quite wrong, he said, because Subhasan Rabos sat near our house, there is a big tree, and he sat on the tree that was cut and he was thinking deeply, he said. He sat there. And after that, he never uh, <coughs> left the place and only returned, he said. Now, what happened was that, now I asked him that, what about the clothes and the letter that was given to you by the INA leader, Subhasan Rabos? He said that Subhasan Rabos, according to Subhasan Rabos' suggestions, is due, due, according to his advice, we buried it. As a house was that time near the river, that is the Chopai River, they said, uh, it was damaged by the flood, let's, let us flood, he said. Because of the river was in flood, because of the water, the letter was damaged even for many years, the soul also, the chief soul was also damaged, he said. So there was no evidence, what can we do? Then I asked, do you take any uh, pension? No, he said. However, this Darth Homa, Kapliana, and <coughs> the other Biyadiana, they received pension also from the government of India. They did very well for serving the INA and for uh, <coughs> following Subhas and Rabos and trying to free themselves from the classes of the imperialists. Now, that was what happened. Now, lastly, much time. The Japanese also promised to give independence to India if the INA helped them in their war effort. That was already mentioned. And so that that's when they heard that they were going to be free. So many of them joined there in Manipur also. According to the young man whom I called yesterday, he stated that the Japanese national anthem was also taught to those Mizos who were there in that place, that area, that is Churichanpur area. So that was quite significant. So many Mizzou, not only those three, were joining the INA by that time. But due to fear of the Japanese, they kept aloof for some times. By the end of the war, hope and aspiration was not totally ended for the Mizzou's. Because of the war influence, political assassin began to be acknowledged by the Mizzou elites. As already mentioned, there was no political forum in order to assert their right. Now, they started to organize the Mizzou Union in 1946, and from that time onward, they began to assert whatever they felt for the needs of the hour, for the needs of the kids and the country. Okay, so that was all about the Mizzou contribution.